Wendy Bell was an anchor at a middling Pittsburgh station. She decided that she simply couldn't contain her hatred for black people in general and black men in specific, even though she has almost no contact with black people and no reason to even think about black men, she fired off this bit of wisdom in response to five people being shot in a Pittsburgh neighborhood. Quote, You needn't be a criminal profiler to draw a mental sketch of the killers. They are young black men, likely teens or in their early 20s. They have multiple siblings from multiple fathers, and their mothers work multiple jobs. These boys have been in the system before. They've grown up there. They know the police. They've been arrested. Clearly using the oblique language of the liberal bigot, she thought she was being clever and used terms that she thought were just general enough that she could push the black male criminal line without directly opening herself to an accusation of racism. This is the careful white bigot. But her words weren't careful enough. Like most racists, Wendy Bell only gets this worked up where the subject of black people is concerned. Nearly all mass shootings are committed by white people like Wendy Bell, against other white people. In 2016, there's been 84 of them to date, one in Virginia just today. Three people shot, one killed. And yet, we don't see Wendy Bell saying all lives matter. When it's time to drag out the old black-on-black -black crime canard, no white person feels like we should focus on all the victims of violent crime then. And these clowns actually wonder why they have no credibility. Well, typical of white-owned media outlets, the station she worked for at first tried to pretend they didn't know anything about it until the media firestorm erupted in their faces. They then very quickly rediscovered where they'd hidden the pink slips and sent her packing. Bell gave the usual non-apology apology, but it's not Bell or her hypocritical TV station employers that I want to focus on. It's the way her fellow white supremacist counterparts in the rest of the white media chose to cover this story. You've heard the expression media slant before, and this incident is a prime example, because it's caused the white media to forget their usual butt-covering tactics and instead show their bald-faced duplicity. The stories the white media's written about Bill's rightful firing don't read at all like news pieces and instead read like a series of half-assed defenses. Remember, when I told you that whenever anyone attacks black people, the media makes it a point to write pieces meant to say loud and clear, they have a point, you know. They make sure to frame the story so that the audience is being told all throughout the piece what to think about it. We'll focus on three examples in particular. The first is CBS News. At the very top of their piece, before they even tell you who the victims are, hell, before they even mention Wendy Bell's name for that matter, they go in on the neighborhood, calling it a poor suburb. That lets you know how important that is to them. They want the idea of a poor slum to be in the forefront of your mind before you even know what the story is about. They then go on to end the piece by saying Wilkinsburg is a poor, largely blighted suburb known for drug trafficking and gun violence. Just in case you missed it at the beginning of the hit piece. Then they finish by saying, though the street where the shooting occurred was described by neighbors as generally quiet. This is a subtle form of discrediting the black residents of Wilkinsburg. You call the place poor, blighted, drug trafficked and violent, then say, but the residents say it was mostly quiet. This is the white media's slick way of calling the people who live there liars, and also of giving a backdoor defense of Bill's racism. They make sure to hammer only the points that might support what she says, and they don't even bother to make a pretense that they discredit anything to the contrary. The second slanted piece we'll look at comes from USA Today. It was the same story, only at the end they had the nerve to write that while some condemned Bell's racism, quote, others came to Bell's defense and applauded her honesty. Honesty. There it is in black and white. They're literally telling you it's just the truth. There's a saying among people in the media, 
The only time a journalist cites the public's opinion is when it's one that they believe too. The final piece that we'll look at comes from the Washington Post. This piece is written by an Asian, but the white supremacy comes through, naturally, because although the story claims to be about Wendy Bell being fired, the first five paragraphs are devoted to nothing but the shooting. How horrible it was, police investigation, how it was pure murder, etc. Then, after all that, they bizarrely, for no reason at all, put a totally unrelated Twitter post from last year into the middle of the story. A picture that just so happens to have Wendy Bell the bigot standing next to a black man. They don't repost her racist tweets or Facebook comments, but they did make sure to repost this picture, and I'm sure they just chose this one in particular out of the blue. The Washington Post hit piece even had the nerve to use the word honesty when describing her. That's how you know that this is a coordinated effort. The Washington Post then decided to finish up by quoting more of Bell's idiotic musings. First, that she was, quote, tired of hurting. As usual, no matter what happens, it's always about them. Whenever white people get called on the carpet for their racism, They're always the victims, not the people they maligned or insulted, but always them. She then went on to relate how she'd seen a young African-American man at a restaurant on his hands and knees cleaning the floor. According to Bell, she praised this young man to his manager because he was so hardworking. Quote, I wonder how long it had been since someone told him he was special. Well, Wendy, it's probably been a damned long time because when people look at him, the first thing they think about is how on the nightly news, day in and day out, people like you push racist portrayals of young black men like him as being in and out of the system with prior arrests. They have a perverted and unrealistic distorted view of young black men, a view that is formed and reinforced by people like you. In your 18 years too long in journalism, you haven't done one damn story praising young black men, so don't try to act like this is typical behavior of you because it's not. She then went on to write, There's someone in your life today, a stranger you're going to come across, who could really use that. That, my friends, can change someone's course. That's white savior talk right there. The pure white woman who, because of her superior white morality, can see the humanity of a young black man. Perhaps it would be easier to see his humanity if he didn't have to contend with a 24-7 racism engine powered and operated by people like you, Wendy Bell. There's no such thing as journalism under a system of white supremacy because facts, reality, evidence, the truth, Everything in the society has to be held hostage to white people's hypersensitive racial psychoses. There's a reason why we have not and will never have a substantive conversation on gun violence in America or do anything substantive to combat it. A reason why Wall Street will be allowed to rape the national economy every 10 to 15 years. Why we can't address the prison industrial complex or war as an economy. Because to investigate any of those things honestly would require that we punish white life, that is to say, the white lifestyle. It would require that we indict the white majority, and that is not just unsavory to the media, it's the main thing they spend the news cycle trying to avoid. We have to be able to tell white people the unpleasant truths they've been desperately hiding their heads in the sand from. After all, it's primarily white people who are the victims of mass gun violence, but protecting the myth of white moral exceptionalism is literally more important than their very lives. It's certainly more important to keep this feel-good fantasy going to the white media. When they talk about crime in white neighborhoods, they don't discuss the economics of the place, and no white reporter has ever written that Jeremiah Wright or Louis Farrakhan have been applauded for their honesty. This is the white media taking up for one of their own, not merely because she's white, but because she's a racist. Her bigotry reflects theirs, and they know that if she can get booted out, so can they, and they don't want any bricks taken away from that wall. Wendy Bell won 21 Emmys. 21! 
Just think about that. So any of you young people out there considering a career in journalism who want to know what you have to do to get an Emmy, take a look. You have to be a blatant racist. And in a side note, black men have made it a habit to harp on about relationships with white women. You better understand that we live in a system of white supremacy. And in that context, the only relationship that a black person can have with a white person is oppressor and oppressed. Because you don't have the ability to attack them as they can attack you. There is no black privilege that gives you handouts the way white privilege hands them every crumb of their daily bread. You can talk about love being blind all you want, but the truth is you're the one who's being blind. You don't live in your colorblind fantasy. You live in the real world, where people like this are in control. And whether you want to face facts or not, there's a reality here. Let this story sink in. This woman had flown under the radar for two decades. She's gotten 21 Emmys for her so-called reporting. So when you see someone like this reveal themselves, you better understand that this woman is emblematic of the media as a whole. Think about that the next time you watch or read the news.